wireless vans vans means wide area networks we'll see about the cellular telephone and satellite networks first uh, cellular telephony so cellular telephony is designed to provide communications between two moving units called the mobile stations the mobile you carry it is also a station it is a mobile station previously it came with the antenna now the size of antenna has been reduced and now it is inbuilt or it is inside you cannot see it so these are the mobile stations or you can say that uh, you have a say stationary phone or a landline phone now the communication between two mobiles or the communication between mobile station or mobile unit and a stationary unit we call it as a lan unit so this is cellular telephony we talk about the frequency reuse principle because the bandwidth or the frequency is limited so you need to use this chunk of area which you have purchased means if you are a mobile company now you are have you have a limited uh, area in which you have to provide or give service to uh, number of users then transmitting receiving roaming first generation second generation third generation now we have fourth generation also this is a typical cellular system the stationary phone is connected to your pstn that is public switch telephone network and this is connected to your msc that is mobile switching center and this mobile switching center is connected to your base station you might have seen in your vicinity or in your neighborhood these towers but these are not towers these are actually what you see here in this figure is just a structure say iron structure you have antennas here you have transmitters here or receivers here your transceivers here so this is the mobile station which actually connects to these uh, these units which are placed on the top and why they are placed in the top just to increase the area of coverage and this is the cell one cell typically uh, in the form of hexagon and why we call it as a cell the name cell phone or cellular has come from these cells only so number of cells for each uh, base station coverage makes your system as cellular system this is a frequency reuse pattern means how you are going to reuse your frequency this is a reuse of factor 4 that means 1 2 3 4 4 now you can reuse this frequency one here you can reuse the frequency for here and see these these uh, cell cells or uh, these uh, areas region they are far apart they have quite distance so there will be no interference or uh, you can easily connect from here to here not from here to here but those people who are actually talking here they are using the same frequency which are being used here this is the reuse of factor 7 and if you jump to uh, factor 7 this is how you can use it the same frequency at these locations this is the frequency reuse pattern because you have to re reuse the frequency of course without the reuse of frequency it will not be possible to connect to so many users or you cannot cater to all your users because you don't have one or two users you have thousands of users so amps is an uh, analog cellular phone system using fdma that is frequency division multiple access we have seen fdma these are the cellular band for amps and uh, see in this uh, these figure each band is 25 megahertz how much 25 megahertz and which is made up of 832 30 kilohertz analog channels so if you combine these 30 kilohertz 832 you are catering or you are having 832 30 kilohertz uh, channels which is uh, making the band which is 25 megahertz so how uh, you are going to uh, see it in the actual arena is that you have a mobile station here you have a you have a base station here now this is the forward communication that is from base to uh, mobile how you are going to do this these are the various 30 kilohertz channels analog channels and these are the channels again for the reverse communication that is from mobile to base the amps reverse communication band because as i said you are frequency uh, division you are um, doing the frequency division so this is the frequency you have 25 kilohertz is what you have been given the uh, say range so 25 kilohertz you divide it into 30 30 kilohertz of say as we have seen 832 or it can be any number 
So these are 832 channels and 3 kilohertz is voice. Then you uh, perform the uh, frequency modulation and then 30 kilohertz analog. And now you can use any of these 30 kilohertz band. Of course, for uh, 10 kbps control for this, you can have FSK for making it 30 kilohertz analog. So you can uh, send the analog as well as the or communicate or uh, transfer the data as well as the voice with this kind of uh, reverse communication band. This is 2G or uh, second generation cellular phone systems. These are TDMA, FDMA like IS-136, DAMPS, GSM that is Global System for Mobile that uses TDMA, FDMA. Again, CDMA, FDMA is used by CDMA. This is Code Division Multiple Access which is IS-95. This is DAMPS that is uh, what you are trying to do here is you are along with this FDMA, you are also doing the TDMA. So, along with this FDMA, this TDMA, so there is a say you have a voice, 3 kilohertz voice. It is digitized, means uh, through digitization, this is the digital AMPS, say some speed of 7.9 kbps. And through time division multiple access, you can apply QPSK, that is quadrature key, and then these channels. Can be they may be used to communicate or use any of these frequency channels, different channels of 30 kilohertz. So DAMPS or IS136 is a digital cellular phone system. It uses TDMA and FDMA as we have seen just in the figure. In case of GSM, that is global system for mobile. See, this is the 25 megahertz. That is uh, this is the frequency range. And for reverse band, and this is for forward band. Both have say 124 channels. The channel is uh, one channel is 124. Uh, these are 20, uh, 124 channels. Each channel is 200 kilohertz. This is how we divide the GSM bands for forward and reverse. So in GSM, the uh, situation is like this. It uses again the TDMA along with FDMA. So if say some users are there, they are trying to uh, communicate. So you have a dig digitizer that makes it say to some kbps or bits per second and now you have a duration because you are you are using tdma here so the duration is say 120 uh, millisecond for each millisecond there is there is there is a partition which is 26 frames say it is using 26 frames for each duration this will be given time or this will be given time so 120 millisecond duration is given for each of these uh, users and whole of this is uh, say 270 or kbps using your gmsk uh, you can again uh, do the fdma you have uh, 25 megahertz and now you can communicate this is the multi frame components if this is the user data say 65 bits now you have 65 plus some other bit to make it as error control uh, bits along with the user data and then user data plus your error Plus your TDMA, that is time division, you have to have TDMA control bits also. So that makes uh, around 156.25 bits. And then for one one uh, part, because they, this frame is of say 8 slots, and whole of these, one multi frame is equal to say 26 frames. So you have 24 traffic frames along with 2 control frames. And this one goes for 120 millisecond. This is the concept of multi frame components. So GSM is a digital cellular phone system. It again uses TDMA and FDMA. So what about the IS95 that is CDMA plus FDMA. So in this say you have 3 kHz voice it is digitized to 9.6 kbps. Then you have error correction, repeating and interleaving that makes it uh, say 19.2 uh, kbps. Now you have a uh, you know, long code generator and decimator that combines with your uh, incoming data. And that goes to the digital channel because C CDMA is basically different codes for different uh, data. So different codes are being added and once these are added they are combined to form a then it goes to uh, QPSK and there are various channels and you can utilize any of these. This is FDMA along with CDMA. And what about the reverse transmission? The reverse transmission is just the way uh, the opposite of what we have just seen. So it just, uh, it is just uh, opposite. So FDMA is there, then you have DSSS and uh, the reverse is exactly like this. 
So this IS-95 is digital cellular phone system using your CDMA or DSSS. CDMA is called division multiple access. Then you reverse it using DSSS and FDM. The main goal of this uh, 3G cellular telephony is to provide, provide the universal personal communication. This is IMT 2000 radio interfaces. This is 3G, 3G IMT. And uh, these are mobile, mobile uh, international mobile telecommunications 2000 radio interfaces. There are various like uh, IMT DS which uses CDMA, IMT MC multi carrier CDMA, IMT TC time code that is CDMA and TDMA, IMT SC single carrier TDMA, IMT FT frequency time that is TDMA and FDMA. Now we see the satellite networks. The satellite network is a combination of nodes, some of which are satellites. The stations, some stations are satellite. So that provide communication from one point of the globe, say one point, to another point. So a node in the network can be satellite also, and earth station also, and an end user of course the terminal or, or your telephone. So we'll see about the orbits, footprint, three categories of satellites, Geo, Mio, and Leo. You can have a three kind of satellite orbits. First is your equatorial orbit satellite. See, this orbit is along the equator. If this is the equator of the Earth, this orbit is always along the equator also. And now the inclined orbit satellite, that is, if this is the equator, so this is making certain angle with the equator, always certain angle, so that it can, it can cover the whole Earth. How? Because when it is moving like this, and when Earth is also moving, Earth is also moving. In this equatorial, the satellite is moving, but Earth is also moving, so it will only be covering this area, the equatorial and the nearby region. But the inclined orbit satellite, it is going to cover the, because Earth is also rotating, so it will cover most of the area. In the polar satellite orbit satellite, the orbit is along the, uh, the polars or the North Pole and South Pole. So what is the period of a moon according to Kepler's law? We know the period is equal to C, which is uh, you know equal to 1 by 1000, 1 by 100, and the period is in seconds and the distance is in kilometer. So period of a of a moon or any other uh, you know uh, moon is also a satellite. Moon is a satellite of Earth. It's a natural satellite. So Kepler law, you can use this uh, expression. Period is equal to C into distance to the power 1.5. So the solution would be like this, moon is located ex approximately uh, 384,000 kilometer above the earth. Radius of the earth is always taken as C36378, sometimes you will see it as 6400 kilometer, just to make our computation easier. And we apply the formula just we have seen, so that is 1 by 100, that is what we have seen, C, and then distance, what is the distance? Distance is addition of these two, because uh, the distance is always taken from the center. This is the distance, so you add this radius of the earth. Along with the distance, this distance of the moon from the center of the earth we take. So 384,000 plus 6378 and that will come uh, to be one month. And uh, what about the using Kepler law? What is the period of a satellite that is located at an orbit say this much kilometer above the earth? For that we can use, we, we just use 635786 in this place. We can find the time that is 24 hours. Which means that a satellite which is located at this much kilometer, and this is roughly equal to say 36,000 kilometer, has a period of 24 hour. What is 24 hour? That means the time, the, the same time, similar time the, as the rotation period of the earth. Earth rotates uh, on its axis completely in 24 hours. So 24 hours, that is equal to 36,000 roughly. So a satellite like this is said to be stationary to the earth always because the period of revolution of earth is equal to the period of revolution of the satellite. So a satellite like this is said to be stationary to the earth and the orbit we will call it as uh, geosynchronous orbit. It synchronizes with geo that means earth. So we have three categories of satellite geo, meo and leo. This is medium earth, uh, this is low earth and uh, we will see about geo. We have just seen geo that is around 36,000 roughly kilometer. This, these are the altitude of various satellite orbits. As we have seen just geo, this is from the earth 
it goes up to 36k uh, 36000 km and the mio is in between that is around 15000 and then we have lower earth uh, orbits that is around say lower than say 5000 this this is the earth surface this these are very closer or close to earth and these are in between and this goes up to 24 hours of uh, clear view this is van allen belt we call it and uh, there are uses of each and every type of uh, the satellites the uses are this satellite is uh, though it has a shorter distance so it will be able to cover um, a area or a, or a whole area which say for a for a for a country which is small in size why would it require this for communication purposes the better is leo and we can go to gps say neo and then uh, we can have geo for uh, long distance across the globe transmission so these are the satellite uh, frequency band and uh, you have to be very well aware of these bands because people generally ask that what is l band s band q k c band in this satellite frequency bands l is the downlink uh, downlink these are in gigahertz uplink and downlink it is around 1.5 gigahertz uplink is 1.6 gigahertz the bandwidth is 50 megahertz all these uh, you can see you know and and i'm not if if i speak you'll not be able to understand you have to learn it by heart this is very very sure so these are the satellite frequency bands and these are the satellites in geostationary orbit they appear stationary to the earth so this sh figure shows that we can have few satellites that can cover whole uh, whole of our globe and this is the orbit for gps satellites you know you know gps that is gps navstar um, us gps in glonass russian then uh, we have uh, you know galileo also china has also its own gps indian also has gagan this is the triliteration triliteration you consider this to be a sphere so by triliteration this is the two dimensional triliteration if you, if you can assume it to be a 3 3d sphere then the intersection of because intersection of these two uh, say sphere will give you two point and when you interfere or you find an intersection with the third one you'll get a precise third point so you, using this triliteration you can get a point you can get a location latitude longitude or even the height of that particular location this is the point that, that i am talking about what about the leo that is the lower earth orbits so for that you can have these uh, lower earth orbiting satellites and it, they have a limited footprint they have limited foot, footprint now you can communicate using this uh, antennas this is the mobile communication you can have this is an iridium constellation so this iridium uh, system has 66 satellite in 6 leo orbits each at a altitude of 750 km 750 km and uh, gps is around 20000 km and then geostationary of course 36000 km so iridium is designed to provide direct worldwide voice and data communication using hand hand held terminals a service uh, similar to cellular telephony but on a global scale this is teledesic it has 28 satellites in 12 leo orbits each at an altitude of 1350 km so this was a short uh, overview of the cellular telephony and satellite networks thank you so much take care